Good afternoon, radio audience, and again, we want to thank you for tuning in to the Unadulterated Truth broadcast. Again, this broadcast is a live Bible question and answer program where you, the radio listeners, at any point in time during this half-hour broadcast, you can pick up your phones, dial the number 281-837-2222, any Bible questions, comments you'd like to make, and we'll listen to your Bible questions and your comments uh, during this half-hour program. Uh, let me uh, real quickly make an announcement that the Goose Creek Church of Christ uh, beginning July the 8th, running through the 12th, we will be having our Vacation Bible School starting at 7 p.m. nightly. We'll begin actually Sunday morning at 10 a.m., Sunday night at 6 p.m., and then Monday through Friday at 7 p.m. Our theme for this year is Excavation, Discovering the Treasures of Jesus. And also, the Will Clayton Church of Christ uh, will be having their uh, vacation Bible school as well. Their vacation Bible school uh, will begin on uh, on July uh, the 15th. July the 15th, uh, 2018. July, let me correct that, July the 16th through the 18th. They'll run through July 16th through the 18th, and their theme will be the mystery of the one true church. That'll be at the Will Clayton Church of Christ uh, there in Humboldt, Texas. And they're located at the Ramada Hotel and JFK. Okay, that being said, uh, if you have your Bibles, turn to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, and I'm going to read into your hearing verses number 3 through verse number 5. We're going to pick up with part 2 of our subject matter, uh, the deep thoughts of God. Part 2, the deep thoughts of God. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse number 3, uh, Paul writes, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity, here we go, every thought, to the obedience of Christ. And uh, so we're going to, again, do part two of the deep thoughts of God. There's been some questions that have been posed to us. And at this time, I'm going to toss it to Brother Ozan, who's going to uh, give us our first subject matter to deal with around the deep thoughts of God. Brother Ozan. Thank you, Henry. Welcome, audience. Going quickly to the subject. A question was posed. If the gospel is preached uh, by a gospel preacher, remember the Lord's church, and a Baptist and a Catholic hear the message sitting together. Uh, the Baptist could baptize the Catholic and that soul would be saved. And then the Catholic could in turn turn around and baptize the Baptist guy and that soul would be saved. Because they heard the message and the statement from the evangelist, which unfortunately I must report the truth, is a member of the Lord's church said that uh, it doesn't matter about the life of the baptizer. And so therefore they would both be saved. And the evangelist in the church of Christ said his validation was not scriptural. Uh, it was an example, for instance, to say maybe someone like Peter still struggling with accepting of Gentiles uh, still could baptize. But Peter is a member of the Lord's church. That's the That's difference. Right. And he has the seal, according to Ephesians chapter 1, 13 to 14. So Peter would have the right, which is the character and the authority of Jesus Christ to baptize, which is what is lacking in Acts 19, 1 through 5. And so, therefore, the individual thought that his text would be valid in his heart by creating one. And he said his dad was baptized by a Methodist preacher and was a member of the Church of Christ. And his statement was, I know you're not going to tell me my dad was lost, mm -hmm. which means nothing to heaven nor those of God on the earth. And so therefore, that's the question in the audience. We're going to answer in case you have to get off the listening waves. The answer is no, neither the Baptist nor the Catholic would be saved. Amen. And here comes the reason why. Turn your Bibles to Acts chapter 19. Now we're going to pull out a valid baptism that is in the text of Mark 1, 4 through 5. And it has been received by 12 in Ephesus. And these 12 more than likely have left the worship of Diana, who is the goddess 
of all of Asia, worshipped by all of Asia, according to the uh, coppersmith, the guy who was, forgive me, was making her statues. And in addition to that, Ephesus is her hometown. According to the legend, which is false, the statue fell out of heaven into Ephesus. Okay, so that's Diana's story. So these people have left idolatry more than likely and have come to Christ. They believe he's coming and they've been baptized. And they believe their sins are removed. Paul believes he's coming back, key word. And he's been baptized. And his sins are totally removed. John's baptism is ended as a Pentecost. No one should be talking about it. So let's look at Acts 19, 1. It came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul having passed to the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. Acts 19 and 2. He said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? They said unto them, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. He said unto them, Unto what then were you baptized? They said, Unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John truly baptized the baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him, which is about them, that is, on Christ Jesus. Okay, now, now the argument is a little more easier to prove because the teacher is not of God. So this false teacher within the church is saying, because the teacher, say himself, is of God, the message should be received. It doesn't matter who baptized. Well, now, now remember the story. They have heard a false message, watch this, and have been baptized, showing I believe I need sins removed, and I believe I should wait on Christ. Now, Paul just told them the truth. Listen to me, audience. Why baptize them? What for? If the baptism doesn't matter who baptizes you, what does Paul do? Does he agree with the false teacher in Georgia, the false preacher that's in a building, Church of Christ? Or does he agree with what God has told him to say? Let's see what Paul does in verse 5. When they heard this, they were baptized. What? Why? In the name of the Lord Jesus, you mean to tell me they can't get the character and the authority from hearing the message? Well, that's what this guy is saying. The character and authority are given in the message. The baptizer has nothing to do with it. Well, why does Paul baptize him again? Does water save? No. Who taught us? 1 Peter 3, 21. Why well, put them in more? Now, listen. We have just exposed a so-called gospel preacher that has lied to the children of God in the world. And as we told you before, we do not hold back punches. To save you, you must get knocked out of Satan's kingdom into the Lord. 1 Peter 3, 21. The life figure went to even baptism. Does also now save us. Look at the rest of the part. Because the water is holy. That's not in your Bible, is it? No. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh. But the answer of a good conscience toward God. Do you understand? We know it's not the water. So why baptize them again? He says, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Does it save? Yes. Then if they've already been baptized, all they needed to do was hear the message. Why give them the message and they not be considered saved? Because the baptizer doesn't belong to the law. That's why. Look at verse 22. Why is Christ who's going to heaven? What's his post? He is on the right hand of God. What's under him? Angels, authorities, and powers being made subject unto him. So in Acts 19, go back quickly. And, and I'm a few more things and I'm done. The message that was given to these men was not of Jesus. And they were baptized. If the water means nothing, and they've given their allegiance to Christ, and they do believe he's coming back, then when Paul gives them the truth, why baptize them again if there's nothing in the water? The Holy Ghost does the baptize in 1 Corinthians 12 and 13. Look at what the text says. Now listen, audience. We're proving to you that we're men of God. We're not going to side with this evil teacher just because he thinks he's in the church of Christ. Or he's going to validate his daddy is saved by being baptized by a Methodist preacher. His daddy is not Jesus. 1 Corinthians 12, 13. But by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. That would be the church, Colossians 1, 18. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles, it doesn't matter who you are. Whether we be bond or free, it doesn't matter what you are, crook or criminal. And have all been made to drink into one spirit. The Holy Ghost does the baptizing. So if they were first dipped in water, then that would mean the Holy Ghost baptized. It doesn't matter who baptized. The message just needs to be adjusted. Paul adjusts the message. Then why will he baptize again? Because the message 
and the baptizer must both be of God. Yeah. That's what's lacking. Audience, the number to call is 281-837-2222. Audience and saints around the world. And I mean that literally because this message goes all over the earth. Can you please call now? 281-837-2222. Or leave a message on the YouTube board when you get this to tell us why baptize again in Acts 19, 1 through 5 if it doesn't matter about the baptizer. I'll succeed now to uh, Brother Henry or how you I'm going to thank you, Brother uh, Ozana. I think we've actually uh, spoke on this subject before. Now, yes. this is a very uh, uh, crucial subject to many of you who are listening to uh, this religious station and, and many other religious uh, radio stations and television programs. I do not want you to just listen to this program and allow uh, this subject to roll off of your back like water off the back of a duck. This, yes. If you don't get this and understand this, my friend, you are going to find yourself in a devil's hell. Yes. It does matter. Listen to me. It does matter who baptizes you. Amen. A person who is a Catholic, a Baptist, a Methodist, a Presbyterian, and the list is a Muslim, a person who doesn't even believe in God at all, they do not have, listen to me, they do not have the Spirit of God. They cannot do, and God does not use them to accomplish, listen to me, any of his spiritual work. Now, in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, now I've got to give you Bible because my opinion uh, is just as, as, as good as the opinion of the guy who said, well, you can't tell me that my daddy's not said That was his opinion. Mm -hmm. And so I can get an opinion and just say, okay, well, yeah, he is. But the Bible has to be the standard of authority. Amen. What does the Bible say? And that's what you and I must do on every issue. So what we're going to do is going to prove from the Bible that light and darkness has no fellowship. Amen. In 2 Corinthians That's chapter 6 and verse number 14, Paul writes, he said, Be you not unequally yoked together with unbelief. He's writing to Christians. He says, For what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion have light with darkness? Do y'all see that? Now, you have to admit, a person who is not in Christ is not saved. A person who don't have the Spirit of God, they are not saved. And so if you're not saved, you don't have the Spirit of God, then guess what you are? You are spiritually dead. You are spiritually dead. I'm going to make sure you understand that. Spiritually dead. He says, in what concord, what concord has Christ with Belial? Or what part had he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement had the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of living God. As God it says, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, said the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Now, what you have to understand, radio listeners, is before I became a Christian, before Brother Jose and Javier, Brother Green, those brothers who are here, became Christians, we were spiritually dead. Any member uh, who is now a member of the body of Christ were dead. We were spiritually dead. We were dead to God. And anybody who gets and needs to be baptized, you have to understand, they are dead as well. And so somebody who is spiritually dead, the Catholic, the Baptist, the Methodist, and the sinner, they are both dead. They are dead to God. They are not alive to God. They do not have the spirit of God. And so therefore the dead who don't have the spirit cannot bury the dead. Somebody else who does not have the spirit. I want to make sure we get that. God Amen. does not use people who do not have his spirit to perform any of his spiritual work in the kingdom of God. Now, the question always on the floor for those who say, well, it doesn't matter. And see, we, we got this in the Church of Christ. We've got brethren who believe it doesn't matter who baptizes you. Mm -hmm. That long as the person who's getting baptized hears the truth, know the truth, understand why they're getting baptized, then they say that's all that matters. But we beg the devil, and so does God. Because there has to, as we talk about studying the Bible, there always has to be an approved example. Amen. See, you, do you have an approved example in the Bible of somebody who is spiritually dead, somebody who is not a Christian, baptizing a sinner? See, you don't have an example of that, my friend, in the Bible. It, yes, baptism is a physical act. Yes, it's something that we as humans, we do here on earth. But so is taking the Lord's Supper. 
the, the Lord's Supper is a physical act. Somebody gets the juice. Somebody gets the bread. We come together on the Lord's Day, and we all do this physical act, which has spiritual implications. But it does matter the emblems that we use when we partake of the Lord's Supper. We can't say it's okay to use cake and punch uh, for the Lord's Supper as long as we understand what it means to us when we take it. You know why we can't do that? Because there is no approved example of that being done Amen. in the Bible. There is no approved example. And just like that, even greater than that, there are women in the Church of Christ who does have the Spirit of God. Do you not know there is no example of a Christian woman with the Spirit baptizing anybody? So there are women, physically, women, women on earth, physical, they're women, they're born women, they, 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 they have a woman's body, uh, they obey the gospel, they have the Spirit of God just like a man, but there is no example of a woman baptizing anybody to bring so that God would bring about a spiritual birth. And these people have the spirit. So now if God wouldn't use a woman who has the spirit of God, Amen. what makes you think that he'll use a Catholic, a Baptist male, or anybody who does not have the spirit of God Amen. to bring about spiritual birth? My friend, God does not do that. And so if you were baptized you were placed in water by a Baptist, a Methodist, a Catholic, names that are not in the Bible. People, I mind you, and I say this with all the love and heart, they can believe all they want to believe that they're saved. See, there's some of you listen. I don't care what he's saying. I'm saved. I don't care what they say. I believe. See, I know how good God has been to me, and I know what he's done for me. I know what God's brought me from, and I know there's some of you listening to this program. You're saying that, and this is running off your back, like, like I said, like water off the back of a duck. You're listening. You got uh, two fingers in your ear, and you're, ah, la, 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 la. I just don't believe. I'm not listening to what he's saying, and I know I'm a Christian. I don't care what he's saying, but let me tell you something, my friend. You can say what you want to say, but I'm telling you, what you're saying, you cannot find a scripture to support it. Amen. You cannot find a scripture to support that anybody was a Baptist, a Methodist, a Presbyterian, that anyone without the Spirit baptized anybody and they became a child of God. Amen. And so just because you say that you're a Christian, just because you believe you're a Christian, you're no different than an individual standing in their garage and saying that they're a car. Mm. You can stand in your garage all day and say, I'm a car, and I'm a fine car. I'm a nice car. I'm a fast car. I got a full gas. My engine is nice. It will not make you a car. Amen. And you can sit here, and you can listen to this, and you can believe you're a Christian. You can think that you're a Christian. You can think that you have the Spirit of God. But I'm here to tell you, based upon the biblical authority, what God has said, how he gives one the Spirit, it takes a male who is a member of the church of Christ, yes. who obeyed the gospel himself to take a sinner who hears the gospel of Jesus Christ and physically take that confession and place them on water where Jesus, who is alive, then will give them the gift or the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Now, I want you to, 281-837-2222, you're listening to this program, I'm begging you to study what we're saying here. Because if you die, I promise you this, if you die without obeying what we have just showed you from the book, a proved example, I'm going to promise you something that I know based on the word of God. You're going to find yourself in a devil's hell. Yes. Don't base your Christian walk on how blessed you may be physically here on earth. The devil will give you the world hmm. because this world belongs to him. Yes. The blessings you want that come from God are spiritual. And those blessings, spiritual, are only found in Christ. And Christ is the one who has determined where the place is he would give spiritual life. He has chosen the people he would use to bring about that spiritual birth. One more thing before I toss it. God chose how he was going to bring about physical life into this world. He said physical life was going to take place by a man getting through to a woman, and the woman, she would bring about physical birth. God chose it. It don't matter how mad a man gets. God has determined that if physical life is going to happen, that it's going to happen through the womb of a woman. Amen. Now, just like God has chosen how physical life is to happen, he's also chosen how spiritual birth happens.
Amen. And he has chosen that a male man with the spirit will take a sinner, place them in water, and then God, who will give life, unless he does physical life, will bring about the spiritual birth. It don't matter how mad a Baptist gets, a Catholic gets. It don't matter how mad a woman gets. This is what God has chosen and said he was going to do to bring about spiritual birth. Amen. And if you and I were not born spiritually the way God has said to be spiritually born to receive the spirit, I'm telling you, you're dead and you will die in your sins. 281-837-2222. Brother uh, Javier, I believe you have something you want to add. Yes, God bless you, brethren. You know, audience, I want to go back, uh, back to the past here. I want to go back to Acts chapter 1 so we can read and make this as real as possible. When you look at Acts 1.15, it says, And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said the number of the names together were about 120. That's how much believers, that's how much saved individuals there existed. The old law was done away with. Judaism has been done away with as Christ died on the cross. The scriptures give the number of how much were saved. Now I want to add another number to that in Acts chapter 2, looking at verse uh, 41. Then they that gladly received the word were baptized, and the same day were there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. So unto those 120, there was added 3,000 souls unto the same number that was saved. Through baptism. Now, I want to I want to show you what the leadership in this time frame thought about the two some two leaders that were a part of this Christian religion, Christian church, the Church of Christ. In Acts four thirteen, it says, "Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled, and they took knowledge of them. That's the, Peter and John, those two real individuals, not fictitious characters." It says that they had been with Jesus. Mm -hmm. And beholding the man which was healed, standing with them, they could say nothing against it. So they despised Peter and John. These religious men despised them. They seen them as flesh. They said, what well, do they have? I'm above this individual. Uh, they are inferior unto me. However, God, through Christ, as him down on the cross, has brought Christianity into effect. He purchased the church with his own blood. And these 120... To 3,000 individuals at this time frame are the only ones in the world that are saved. Mm -hmm. To be saved in this time frame, you have to obey the gospel that Jesus Christ, he died. He was buried according to, to the scriptures. He resurrected according to the scriptures. And those who o obey and hear what Peter and John have to say concerning the gospel, as they obey and get baptized, they get added to that same number. That same right. form is happening today, audience, where... That same church is in existence, and you have to be added to that same number. I want to show you in the Old Testament where Nehemiah, Nehemiah in Nehemiah 13, 13, it says, And I made treasures over the treasuries, Shalamiah the priest, and Zadok the scribe, and of the Levites, Padai. And next to them was Hanan, the son of Zachar, of the son of Mataniah, for they were counted faithful, and their office was to distribute unto their brethren. Now what Nehemiah was doing was collecting the Levites together as offices because it was their position to do the work uh, as Levites in the temple. Now, understand that if you weren't a Levite, you couldn't play instruments. Uh, you couldn't do services concerning the, the sacrifices. Now, in Nehemiah chapter 7, in verse 5, uh, the scripture mentions that God put into mine heart to gather together the nobles and the rulers and the people that they might be reckoned by genealogy. And I found a register of the genealogy of them which came up at the first and found written therein. Now, genealogy, physical blood, at the time, at this time, God was accounting the physical blood Levites and the physical blood Jews as his children. And only the real uh, physical blood Levites could have access to do uh, this type of work. In verse 64 of that same chapter, these sought their register among those that were reckoned by genealogy, but it was not found. Therefore were they as polluted, put from the priesthood. Mm -hmm. So those who were not a part of the genealogy, they were polluted. They were put forward from the priesthood. Now, today, God is not recognizing the physical blood uh, as acceptance to be a spiritual priest. 
Today, God is accepting the spiritual blood, which means that you have to have the spirit of Christ Amen. to preach the gospel. Amen. You have to have the spirit, spirit of Christ to baptize somebody after you preach unto them. And then God will work through you. He will work in the water where he'll remove the sins and he'll give the individual the Holy Spirit. Now, I want to recognize this because the baptism that is done in the Church of Christ, the baptism that is done in the Baptist Church, it looks exactly the same in a lot of instances. It looks exactly the same. There's no difference. However, when we look at the scriptures in 1 Kings chapter 8, 18, verse 24, Elijah said, And call ye on the name of your gods, and I will call on the name of the Lord, and the God that answereth by fire, let him be God. And, let all, and all the people answered and said, It is well spoken. And Elijah said unto the prophets of Baal, Choose you one bullet for yourselves and dress it. First all ye many, and call on the name of your gods, but put no fire under. Now what happened was the servants of Baal, they put the same bullet so the fire could come down from heaven. But they cut themselves and the fire did not come. Now Elijah, he put a bullet, the same bullet. And what happened when he called upon God? The fire came down from heaven and burnt up his sacrifice. So God answered Elijah with fire from heaven. Same, but they used the same bullock. However, God worked with Elijah. Now, in 1 Kings, another example, uh, chapter 12, looking at verse 32, it says, And Jeroboam ordained a feast in the eighth month, on the fifteenth day of the month, like unto the feast that is in Judah, and he offered upon the altar. So he did, he and Bethel sacrificing unto the calves that he had made, and he placed in Bethel the priest of the high place which he had made. He says, So he offered upon the altar which he had made in Bethel the fifteenth day of the eighth month, even in the month which he had devised his own heart, and ordained a feast to the children of Israel, and he offered upon the altar and burnt incense. Like, now in verse 32 it says, On the fifteenth day of the month, like unto the feast that is in Judah. So he tried to do it just like they do it in Judah. He tried to copy the same thing they do in Judah. However, the two calves and Dan and Bethel is not what God requested. Amen. So there be many churches that baptize similarly, immersion, just like the Church of Christ. But if the male that is doing the immersion does not have the Spirit of Christ in the Baptist Church, that will now work through that through that male or in that operation in the water where well, the Holy Spirit will be given. At this time, our time is closing. Understand that Christ died. He purchased the church with his own blood. And the Church of Christ is the name. It's still here today. One day Jesus will come and pick it up when all resurrect from paradise. And we on earth will be taken up afterward. Romans 16, 16. The Church of Christ salutes you. I want y'all to hear this that's watching this program. Do not base your relationship or your salvation on your physical blessings that you might be receiving from Amen. God. See, many of you, you think that you're right with God simply because you live in a nice house, uh, you have a nice car, you have your health, and so you equate those things as you were having spiritual blessings from God. Let me tell you something, God in the Bible is very clear. He calls it the rain on the just and the unjust. Yes. There are atheists out there. People don't believe in Bible, don't believe in God, mm -hmm. who have help, who are eating, who have homes, who have cars, mm -hmm. and all those things. But what they don't have is they don't have the spirit of God. That's and if right. they die lost as well as you, without the spirit of God, because you've been basing it upon your physical blessings, my friend, you're going to open your eyes again in a devil's hell. You Amen. cannot go to heaven without the Spirit of God. And God has given the methodology on how one re receives the Spirit, how one is born again, not physically, but spiritually. It takes a male member who has the Spirit of the Lord's Church to pay, place your lifeless body, soul, in the water where Jesus will give you the Spirit. He will add you to the church. And if you live faithful and we live faithful unto death, then and only then can heaven and will heaven be your eternal home. Please be like the Bereans were in Acts chapter 17 11. Search the scriptures and find out if the things that we're saying to you are so. 
See in the Bible if you see any approved example of anybody other than a male with the spirit has placed anybody in the water. And my friend, I'm going to promise you something. You will not find it because that is not how God has chosen to bring about a spiritual birth. God be with you and God speak to you. Amen. Amen. I want to share something, Henry. I want to commend you, Brother Free. It's a great job. I want to show you all what some of these words mean uh, that Henry used from 2 Corinthians 6. Uh, the word uh, concord means accordance. And one of the words this word accordance deals with is for one, watch this, to be in agreement with. Now, that means that there is no agreement for the participation to be done between Christ and Belial. Remember, one person yeah. belongs to the devil. So Christ and Belial has not agreed upon right. that our people can work in agreement. Here's another word I want to deal That's with. Right. Uh, and that accordance is 4857, G4847. The word part. What part had he that believed with an infidel? G3310. Guess what part means? Participation. Now, hang on. We still, we're still chugging away. Now we're going to deal with some other words here from here. Now watch this. Uh, I believe uh, Henry used the word agreement. The word agreement. Now that's pretty self-explanatory, but we're going to put it up. Because remember, this is 2 Corinthians 6. 4, 8. Oh, forgive me. Agreement means 4, 7, 8, 3. G, 4, 7, 8, 3. This word agreement, a deposition of sentiment in company with. Accord agreement. Now watch this. What does the word apply to? What agreement has the temple of God with Ida? So there's no agreement there. Well, let, let's search another word. Let's see if an individual can find some type of agreement in any of these words that are used in 2 Corinthians chapter 6. There is no participation from any of these words. Look at the word fellowship. Most people know what fellowship means. But what we want to do is point out to you so you can understand from 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. G3352. G3352. Gives that word mean participation, intercourse. There is no interreaction with these two opposing thoughts. Here's another one. What fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion? Look at the word communion, have light with darkness. G2842. Guess what that word means? Partnership, participation. In summation, for that brother, that poor soul that wants to cause us to think someone else can baptize because his dad was baptized by a Methodist, and I don't believe why he said his dad was ever baptized again. His dad is lost. Here's the reason why. Because there is no participation or agreement or partnership with any of the opposing thoughts in 2 Corinthians Chapter 6, verses 14, 15, and 16. So therefore, unless God has lied to us, I know that the word participation and partnership means an agreement. There is no agreement with Coca-Cola workers riding in Pepsi trucks delivering Pepsi. Vice versa. There is no agreement with the intertwining of two opposing companies in any level there is no agreement with a man being married to a woman, and then that woman can participate in marriage with another man. There is no such thing as opposing groups participating. You do not find it in the scripture. The only time you see different nations coming together is under the gospel. That brother is lost for teaching that, and all of you at that church in Georgia, you are lost. Your souls are lost because if you teach this, you have to rebuke that brother and sit him down. He will not change that because that will block the door. You'll be like the Pharisees. You will block the door of others entering in and you will not enter in yourself. Because if God says there's no participation, as Brother Henry and Javier has taught us, even from the Old Testament, Javier went all the way back. There's no participation. We pray that you will change before it's too late.